Economic valuation techniques can be applied in a number of ways. These are appraisal, which will be discussed in, a, in more detail below, strategic environmental assessment, an environmental impact assessment, which we discuss in the integrated environmental management course, and natural resource accounting. Natural resource accounting provides a physical and monetary account of natural resource availability and economic use. Thus, it assesses the physical stock and flow of a resource and establishes the gain or loss in the physical use of the resource in the economy and economic value of that resource. These applications can use a combination of valuation techniques as most aspects of total economic value can usually not be estimated by using a single technique. Economic appraisal can be conducted on a policy, program or project level. The purpose of an appraisal is to compare the costs and benefits of alternatives on the various levels. This can be done using different analytical frameworks such as cost-benefit analysis, cost-effectiveness analysis, or multi-criteria analysis. The cost-benefit analysis approach compares the costs and benefits of alternative options from a societal point of view. The alternative options may be different projects or minimally a with and without intervention scenario. Certain factors need to be taken into account. Firstly, the risk and uncertainty due to ignorance of the future and environmental effects associated with the CBA needs to be assessed. Risk refers to being able to attach a probability to a happening while no probability exists with uncertainty. Where uncertainty can be converted into risk, a sensitivity analysis can be conducted. This would entail calculating the switch value for key variables to find the point at which the net present value is reduced to zero. Secondly, the sustainability of the project and its resource consumption needs to be considered in the light of maintaining natural resources for future generations and, ir and irreversible effects of certain projects. In certain instances, the implementation of a project may have detrimental effects on the environment that cannot be reversed or rehabilitated. Thirdly, the distribution effects need to be taken into account. The implementation of a project, policy or program will benefit certain individuals and, con and place a cost on others. Thus, these gainers and losers need to be identified. Another concern is the distribution of benefits between different socioeconomic groups as growth in the inequality gap should be minimized. The premise of the CBA is that the potential benefits to gainers should be sufficient to potentially compensate the losers in full. There are six steps in the appraisal of a project. These are as follows. Firstly, clear project goals must be identified that address broader strategy, strategies and policies. Secondly, costs and benefits which include inputs and outputs must be identified quantified and scheduled. Then values need to be assigned to the costs and benefits. These values are used to compare the costs and benefits of the project. The uncertainty and risk factors need to be evaluated. Finally, the economic and or financial criteria need to be weighed against the other objectives and criteria. Three decision criteria exist and are used to assess the feasibility of projects and weigh projects against one another. These are the net present value, internal rate of return and benefit cost ratio. The cost effectiveness analysis compares the cost of alternative options to set objective or target. This approach is used when an objective or benefit is already set or is clear and if benefits are hard to measure. The decision criteria is then to select the most effective and cost-efficient method, which is usually the least costly method. Multi-criteria analysis is a complementary approach to economic analysis that allows the inclusion of non-economic decision criteria. This method is particularly useful when the decision maker's main objective is not economic efficiency. Also, since impacts do not need to be expressed in monetary terms, it allows one to include environmental impacts and other criteria that cannot be valued. Multi-criteria analysis is different to economic analysis in that it is not limited to the economic efficiency decision criteria. Furthermore, criteria can be included and expressed in both monetary and non-monetary terms. Finally, the incorporation of criteria is not reliant on the availability of monetary terms thus making this a useful tool 
when data is not easily available. There are four basic steps in the MCA. Firstly, the project objectives and alternatives need to be specified. The objectives will contain broad objectives, which are usually vague and non, not operational, and more operational lower level objectives that identify possible action. Secondly, the criteria need to be identified. These provide a way of measuring progress and meeting the objectives. The criteria can be a combination of qualitative and quantitative attributes. Each alternative is then judged according to these criteria. Criteria and alternatives are combined in a decision-making matrix. Thirdly, the decision-maker's system of preferences needs to be specified. This entails either using weights or an unweighted system. Finally, the global performance of alternatives are identified given the system of preferences. Detail in the weighting and ranking process are available in Chapter 8 of the Forum for Economics and Environment Training Manual under the Documents section.